Hey guys, Rob here with McDojo Life. In today's McDojo Breakdown, we're going to be discussing a martial arts instructor who thinks that by using compassion instead of technique, he can get out of a choke. Let's check it out and let's break it down. You don't feel my power. You feel my compassion. What if I go, hey, thanks for me, thanks for everything. Hold it on So they got me, and I'm letting them get me. I'm gonna see anything powerful happening here because he's choking me out. So all I can do is feel the use of So now, if I start trying to find all the places that it can get, I'm going to be in problem, right? But if I feel everywhere it can expand... The guy you just got done watching in that video goes by the name of Corky Quackenbush. And normally around this time is when I'd make fun of the person's name, but let's just be honest, the name is funny enough by itself. It doesn't, doesn't need my help. According to Mr. Quackenbush's IMDb, he is not only a writer, but he's a director, a producer, and actor, and works primarily on animated films. Some of you guys might even know some of his work. He actually did work on Mad TV, and he did the claymation version of the show Cops, which they did a skit on Mad TV called Clops. If you don't remember, here's a little clip. I'm sick of the man giving me the finger! Here's your finger, bitch! Not gonna lie. I loved those skits on Mad TV, and I thought they were done amazingly. So even though he might be a crazy person when it comes to martial arts, he's got some skill when it comes down to some funny animation. According to his Wikipedia page, and yes, he does have a Wikipedia page, he is also the founder of something called Kakushi Toride Akita, which I'm pretty sure I got right, but if I got wrong, I don't really give a shit. But when it comes down to it, he describes his art as this. A non-traditional Aikido training developed to bring a student to a more profound experience of what we believe the founder intended. In that statement, he refers to someone as the founder, and he talks about what the founder intended. And the founder he's talking about, of course, is the founder of Aikido, Morihei Yushiba. Now, that person is normally referred to as O-sensei generally. If you're not familiar with O-sensei's work, here's a quick clip. Bullshit. While I'm not saying O-sensei oh, is a complete fraud, and I'm not saying 100% of Aikido is nonsense, what I am saying is, is that a 78-year-old man tossing around a group of four to eight dudes is complete and utter nonsense. <laughs> Stuff all that hate in your hakama. And while I don't think that O-sensei's oh, original goal was to give people a false sense of confidence and get them hurt because of their learning nonsense, I do think that Mr. Quackenbush has taken some of the more demonstration purposes of Aikido and turned them into some type of gospel in which he's teaching people that you can just project your love into someone and they'll fall over, which is not going to happen. Let's look back at that original clip that we showed at the beginning of this video. Why Aikido? Choke anytime you want. The way he says choke me anytime during that demonstration kind of comes off as like an S&M kind of thing. Choke me, devil daddy. Choke me. And then, all of a sudden, he just stops choking the guy and falls over because he's overwhelmed with the guy's compassion. Bullshit. People all the time get on to me, too. They go, Rob, you always down these people. You always call these frauds out, but you never really show a solution yourself. Well, you know what? I actually found a solution for this particular problem. Here it is. Uh, uh, uh. I find your lack of faith disturbed. Uh, oh, do, you, do you have a boner right now? What? <laughs> No! Harder! Harder! Works every time. Now, granted, that was the guy using the force instead of just a regular hands-on choke, but I imagine if you get a boner during a force choke and the guy lets go, then most likely he's probably going to let go if you get a boner with a regular choke. I'm just spitballing here. Also, in the video clip that I showed you originally, you can see him trying to fumble around with the hands 
against a cross collar choke. He seems to be wanting to break the grip, I guess, but he's not actually addressing the grip. He's kind of just moving his hands around, like, I guess, like a Ricky Bobby. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. And then eventually he does come to the conclusion that he's not going to be able to break any of these grips. And so he could just compassions the guy again. And uh, he winds up thanking him for being choked, which seems to work in this particular clip because the guy just falls over. It's not going to work like that in real life. But in the video, he's just like, OK, well, thank you for choking me, which comes off again as like an S&M kind of thing. Stop kink shaming me. Kink shaming is my kink. But let's address this one technically as well. Like, what's the solution besides growing a boner and saying thank you, Daddy, to actually getting out of this particular choke? So I have my McDojo Life Gi here. And yes, that is a shameless self-promotion, <laughs> which I do from time to time. But it's my channel. I'll do what the hell I please. But anyway, uh, you can pick one of these up at EpicRollBJJ.com. Uh, we still have them there, and we're going to just keep them in stock. We were originally going to do these as a one-off gi, but we decided to just go ahead and manufacture them and just keep them going. So if you want to pick up a McDojo Life gi, head on over. The choke he's trying to escape out of is referred to as a cross-collar choke for obvious reasons. You're crossing your arms, you're grabbing the collars, you're applying a choke. I don't make up the names, but it made complete sense to me. Understanding how to get out of a cross-collar choke, you kind of need to understand how to actually apply a cross-collar choke, which in this video that the gentleman was demonstrating was very poorly executed. There are a lot of different ways to hold your hands. There are a lot of different ways to attack a cross-collar choke. I'll just show you a really basic one. So you're going to take your four fingers just like this. Thumb's going to be out, and you're going to slide your fingers up the collar until you get as far as you can. In order to make this choke work, it has to be a deep grip. If your grips are shallow, you'll notice that there is a giant hole here and I'm not going to be able to choke the person. So I want my grip deep. So I slide my fingers in, palm up, and grab as deep as I can inside that collar. The other hand is not going to go over the top. It's going to go underneath to the other collar and I'm going to get as deep as I can here. A good rule of thumb, which will make sense here, is if you can touch your thumbs together behind the person's neck, you'll probably have a good choke. I told you earlier that you don't want to cross your hand over, you want to cross your hand under. The reason you don't want to cross your hand over is because it's going to be the person's natural response once that other hand starts coming in to want to grab down. If my hand is already there and I already have one grip, and I start reaching over the top, when they grab, they're gonna grab my arm and stop me from being able to finish the choke. So by sneaking my arm underneath, the first thing that they're gonna grab is the top arm, allowing this arm a little extra time and a little more freedom to get a deeper grip that I really need to finish the choke. Finishing the choke is all about your wrists and your grip. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna pull. A lot of people will come here and they'll start pulling and squeezing. That's not really helping. What I wanna do is I wanna make that hole disappear. And how do I do that? I do that by grabbing, making sure I have a good solid grip on the gi or on the collar because it doesn't necessarily have to be a gi. Um, then I take my hands and I flex my wrist out this way. And what that's going to do is that's going to pull the back of that fabric tight and allow me to be able to use my wrists to dig into the neck, creating the choke that I need and eliminating that space in that gi. The less space, the harder the choke, the better the choke. You can also execute that same thing on things like collared shirts. Uh, sometimes t-shirts are a little harder. You're going to have to get more fabric and maybe adjust your grips. But it especially works like inside a, a hoodie. It's not really that difficult to grab a hold of some fabric and then do the exact same thing to finish the choke. So yes, things you do on the gi can actually apply to regular clothing as well. Now that we learned how to apply the cross collar choke, we're going to talk about how to defend it, which is just as easy as retracing your steps on what makes it work. In order for me to be able to apply the choke on you, I need to have a really deep grip. So it behooves you to make sure that you don't allow me to get a deep grip. As soon as that grip starts coming up and it starts going towards your neck, you need to start defending. If the grip does start to clamp down, you need to start breaking that grip. If one hand is already in and that thing's sunk in there and the next hand starts coming, it's time to start defending that one as well. Stop those grips from getting in deep. If you can do that, you can put yourself in a better position to not get choked. If you've screwed yourself over, and you messed up by allowing the first grip to go deep and allowing the second grip to go deep. Now you're kind of in survival mode and you're still going to be trying to break those grips or loosen up those hands the best you can. Because if I can at least get them loose, look, the choke goes away. The deeper the choke, the worse it's going to be for me. If you try to defend this choke by just showing compassion, one, they're not going to be able to hear you because you're going to be too busy being actually choked. 
that'll sound something like this. Thank you for choking. And then you'll pass out and then you'll wake up later. And then maybe they peed on you or something. I don't know what crazy people do after they beat you up. But it won't be good. Your job would be to try to stay awake. So that way they don't do things to you while you're passed out. I'm giving this guy two out of five Dillmans. Do I think that he's using supernatural abilities? I don't think in his head he thinks that, that that's what it really is. But it is kind of how it comes across. But you can't just compassion your way out of this situation. This is what happens when compassion doesn't work. You've already tried to love the person and tried to reason with them, and now they're assaulting you. So what he did was he took the first step that you try not to get into the fight, and you try to be a caring person and try to avoid fights, and he thinks that that's somehow going to help in the middle of the fight. It's not. The person is now choking you. You need to defend the choke with techniques, not just with your love. If projecting your compassion and love into someone who's attacking you and assaulting you was a real thing and it really did help you defend yourself in a life or death situation, we'd probably have a lot less domestic violence cases. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to just love your way out of situations. And if someone's applying a technique on you, you need to also apply technique to get out of that. I like to add a little question of the day every time I make one of these videos, just so that way I can know for sure who has and who has not watched the video all the way through. So let's try something a little more interactive and fun this time as well. I want you guys in your comment sections, whatever comment you decide to leave, at the end of your comment, be sure to add a link to one of the craziest martial arts McDojo videos you've ever seen. It could be ours. It could be one that you saw outside. Hey, maybe it's one that you want us to do a review on. Go ahead and add that in your comment as well. One last thing before I wrap it up. If you notice, I don't grow hair here. I was born with something called the cleft lip and palate, which is a birth defect. That birth defect is not something I can help. Um, and people often ask me, well, why don't you just shave your beard? Well, I did for a while. And the reason I stopped doing it is because I noticed that this is a great douchebag detector. It is the best. And when people just address the way that I look and they don't address anything that has to do with the video, the context of which I put together a video, anything that has to do with martial arts whatsoever, and they only attack me for the way that I look, what I do is I block those people. If you want to have an open conversation, an open discussion, if you want to even speak directly to me, I answer every direct message I ever get. I made sure to make a rule that I'd be on any show that ever asked me to be on it. Don't care how many followers you have, I'll be on any show. And I try to make sure that I actually interact with my audience the best that I can. If you actually want to have a discussion about martial arts or anything that I've posted, even if we disagree, I'm happy to do so. But if all you're going to do is attack the way that I look with no other context, I'm just going to block you. It makes my life a lot easier. It makes it so that way I don't have to deal with assholes. And like I said, it's the only reason right now I don't shave this. <laughs> so I don't shave this. So that way, if somebody comments on the way I look in the play, the the comment section, I just block them and I move on with life. I'm not worried about blocking people. As always, thank you all for the likes, comments, shares, subscriptions, and all that other crap people online tell you to do. Keep the martial arts legit.